So that's effectively the last layer before really things start going wrong. And you can see this car here, for example, with 57,000 miles on, it's not a huge amount of mileage um, on an 07. Here we've got an E92 M3 in with us at Reedish Motorsport for Comrade Baron replacement as a preventative measure. Now this owner has his own YouTube channel where he releases BMW M3 content. You can find him on YouTube by searching his channel name, Floor It. Now this is a 2007, so November 2007 build um, with 57,000 miles on the car and it's also a manual transmission as we can see here. We've got the engine already taken apart, so that's the front suspension, the front steering rack, uh, the front subframe, all disconnected from the car. We've got our special car, a special tools on, which is effectively a subframe that we purchased and basically chopped the middle out of. So this is what we call our special tool subframe. The customer subframe comes off of the car and gets put to one side and we put our one on, which means the engine is supported safely on its normal um, sort of dispersing its energy in a normal position into the chassis legs it leaves the engine bay completely clear we don't need to go up into the engine bay to take the airbox off or use an engine load leveler or a crane or anything like that and now we're just doing the plastic gauge measurements um, on this journal here which is actually cylinder number eight which goes on to the very rear word part of um, bank two which is over on the passenger side so here is a conrod which you might see goes up towards the piston, up inside the engine. Um, and then this is the crankshaft, and this is one of the journals, which is what the Comrod and the Comrod bearings run on. Here's one that's pre-assembled fully. So you've got a rod and then a cap. The cap is the piece that comes off once you undo these bolts, which are the Comrod bolts. Um, and that's what we're looking at the opposite here. So that's where the cap and the rod bolts would go into. And they've got numbers on them so they match up perfectly and you can see once they're tightened up you can almost not even see the um the join and that's because there's a sintered connection um what we've done is taken this one off and technician darren has laid a section of plastic gauge over the new bearing and uh, we've put that up onto the journal um carried out a torque process to squash the plastic gauge which is a predetermined size thickness or piece of plastic and then it gives a spread once we unbolt that and take the cap and the comrod and the bolts away it gives a spread up here and we're just going to measure that now with a card which is the plastic gauge card which has got all different sizes on it and we're going to just see which version it's closest to so that one there is 05 0.05 050. Uh, that looks quite good. If we moved it over to uh, a 3.8, I'd say it's a bit too, it's not in line, that's a bit thicker than that. And if we went over the other side, it's definitely smaller than a 3.8. Sorry, I read that upside down. That's a 6.3 and 3.8, those don't line up, whereas a 5.0 is about the closest we're going to get to. So we would call that a 0 0.050 of millimetres. Uh, that's the gap between the Comrod bearings and the crankshaft journal, which is ideal. That's what we're looking for and what we normally do achieve with the ACL Comrod bearing. So we'll carry on, clean that plastic gauge off now, then lubricate the new bearing uh, and the journal, and then put that back together, carry out the torque procedure with the BMW bolts, which has to happen three times because they're stretch bolts, and then effectively mark that one as complete, which is why the other ones have got green paint on the end because that tells us that we're complete we don't need to go back into that area and then there'll just be one more to do later on and that will complete the Comrade bearings on your E92 M3 and uh, we've already got one of these videos on our YouTube channel which we did in the summer of 2019 from memory uh, it's quite a popular video it's also a white E92 M3 from memory it was a 2011 and it was a later car that used the later style bearings now sometime in 2010 earlier more probably sort of spring 2010 the general consensus is that the um, Conrad bearings were changed from a copper and lead material to a aluminium and tin makeup and that's mainly due to EU legislation saying that manufacturers had to take out lots more lead content from um, the production of vehicles it wasn't any change in the bearing construction for clearance issues. The clearances are still the same from old versus new. Um, but those engines, the, the later bearings, still can suffer with issues. And in the video previously that I talk about, um, it showed a 30 minute 
a video of how we did the Commonwealth bearings from start to finish, including the time lapse of changing the bearings and also stripping and rebuilding. This video is basically to show the earlier style bearings that were in production from 2007 to somewhere around about spring 2010. And these bearings have got a part number of 088 and 089, and they are made up of um, copper and lead. So they're a lot softer material, and they do visually wear in a slightly different way. It's arguable whether they're actually any worse or any better than the later ones, but um, this is just an underside video showing that, that we just effectively finished the Comrade Baron set on this car, um, and from that we've used, on this particular car, the customer opted for ACL Comrade Bearings and BMW bolts. And uh, this is just showing the rough makeup of the engine, so the crankshaft goes across from front to back, um, and then you've got Comrades which obviously wrap around the crankshaft journal, and the Comrade bolts there. The green heads mean that we've painted them, that's basically that we've painted, uh, torqued those in the three stage manner that BMW have to, um, you have to adhere to because they're stretch bolts and then they're paint marked. So now just going over to the bench just to show you the bearings that we've taken out of this engine. Now these aren't particularly bad, there's nothing hugely wrong with them apart from they're, they're obviously got some wear patterns on them, um, especially number six, this is cylinder six uh, and as you'll see the uppers, so uh, the upper is anything identified by a U, um, L identifies it as a lower. So the upper bearings always get the, the harder ride, shall we say, because they are getting a lot more force on the downward stroke when the um, combustion cycle actually happens. The piston is being pushed down onto the comrade, the comrade pushes down onto the bearing. The bearing should never touch the crankshaft journal, but effectively there is more wear in that upper bearing. They float on a film of oil, and that film of oil should be anywhere um, from sort of zero point 0.025 up to 0 0.076 of a millimeter. The optimum clearance that we commonly see is 0 0.038 from the BMW bearings, sometimes between 0 0.038 and 0 0.50. Um, sometimes with ACLs you normally see closer to the five zeros um, on, on a good set when there's no problems with bearings, no problems with uh, crankshafts, journals, no problems with um, comrades themselves. So looking at these ones a little bit closer you can see when we talk about copper and lead as a bearing material you can see that in this uh, bearing for example let's take number one so the lower bearing 1L as in cylinder number one lower that is a grey material all the way through um, no real colour changes a little bit darker in the middle but there isn't actually any great problems or any wear patches on there whereas you go through to the upper bearing and then we've got this sort of yellowy beige sort of color material and there's a little bit of a line going across there where you can definitely see from the gray to this color and then that is present all the way around uh, nearly to the edge of this one now that will be showing basically what the lead material is in the bearing and then when you look closer you can see the copper which is in present in a high mark in there and a slightly smaller mark in just there and that is what you're seeing there is the copper material so the copper is underneath the lead and the lead is underneath or whatever this top original coating is um, and effectively the copper is the lower part of the material once you get to a real bad stage um, I'll show you actually I'll put just add into the video about now what a really bad one looks like here's an example of how bad the bearings really get this is a, an s65 bearing that we took out of an engine a few months back um, all of it is shown as nearly all pure copper completely worn and so much to the point where actually the bearing has started delaminating all down the side there and also in the main central section if I zoom in and focus the camera, you can see how much material is missing. And naturally all that material had not only gone into the oil system, but also had been dragged against the crankshaft journal. So naturally it caused damage to the crankshaft journal. So that isn't actually as bad as they get. They can get so bad where the tabs actually, um, they contract so much due to heat and like a thermal runaway reaction where they narrow, they put stress on the tabs that wear and then effectively they slip and then become a spinning crankshaft, a uh, comrade bearing. I've got a couple of pictures here which I'll put in to show you how bad the journals can be on a uh, spun bearing.
but that this here is actually not a spun bearing but it is definitely damaged enough to um to warrant a new crankshaft because the crankshaft had become scored and scratched um, and that's just a little example of what they can become when they get really really bad so from that one, you could see that the copper was uh, extreme all on that bearing material and they had broken up into certain pieces. So that's effectively the last layer before really things start going wrong. And you can see this car here, for example, with 57,000 miles on, it's not a huge amount of mileage um, on an 07, has shown quite a lot of wear. These copper markings haven't caused any damage to the Comrade journal itself. The journals have all checked out perfectly fine. Um, they're not scratched, they're not marred, they're still nice and polished and reflective, but they definitely have shown some bad wear. And number six is actually was actually a worrying part because there's a heavy, stre a longer stretch of copper shown and also a darker type of copper, which tells you that it's had a lot more uh, heat it's had a, certainly a harsher ride than certainly uh, the counterpart which would have been cylinder number two. It would have been running number two and number six run on the same journal, for example. And there's actually even like a green marking in there, isn't there? So it's had some, some strange wear on that one there. But great to see that these are now being taken out of the engine. They're not going to give the engine or the crankshaft in particular any more problems or any more risk. Um, these bearings are going to go um, obviously to the customer. He can use those as he wishes to keep, to pass on to the next owner to show that they've been done, for example. Um, and this video is purely to show the um, sort of outcome, a common outcome of the early style bearings fitted on the E90, E92s and E93 M3s from 2007 to 2010, the 088, the 089 original style Conrad bearings which are made up of a mainly copper and lead material.